We're going to uh, help these guys get to know you a little bit better with a round of applause. Please tell me how many of you have lost colleagues who have either left the city to make their art or left the profession due to financial stresses? How many of you have worked in a space that has closed in the last 10 years? How many of you work in companies or groups with annual budgets over $250,000 a year? How many of you currently have debt related to production costs or student loan debt related to your art presentation? How many of you can cover your rent by only working a temp job three days a month like some did back uh, 35 or 40 years ago? How many of you here promised to vote not just in the general election on November 7th, but also in the primary on September 12th? Uh, welcome everyone, thank you very much for coming. Uh, we made a gap in the center there, so if you want to come down, that's great. We have two microphones here for your use. Uh, quick little thing, we're going to have uh, two minutes. Uh, at 30 seconds, you're going to hear the bell. Right before, uh, at one minute and 30 seconds, you'll hear the bell. At two minutes, you'll hear the concertina. We are short on time, so I'm also going to start yelling at you if you don't stop. Okay, great. So, here we go, icebreaker question. We want to know honestly where you stand on things using the name of the restaurant only. Where can you get the best pizza in New York City? <laughs> Starting it down on the end and working your way around. Pizza Arte? Okay, use the microphone, please. Sorry, Marty Sparanza, I'm Italian, so I can say this pizza arte in okay. Midtown. Great. I have some very good choices, but I'm going to go with Angelo's on, I think, 51st and 2nd. Okay. It was Mariella's at close, and it was Four Roses at also close, but now I'm going to say Delizzi on the Upper East Side, which is a favorite of mine. Hi, my name is Ed Santos. Uh, my favorite pizza place is in East Harlem at Patsy's Pizzeria. Hi, my name is Arden Walentowski. Um, my favorite pizza place is Grandpa's up on uh, in Broadway, up in Inwood, and uh, they know my order. So, <laughs> you know where I go. Hello, my name is John Joanna Joseph Jr., and my favorite pizza spot is the Dollar Pizza Shop. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, put in my nose for me. Uh, I have here the correct answer is anywhere but kiss my slice on 40th and 8th. <laughs> anywhere but. Okay. Here we go. The, the first topic for this panel is the cycle of gentrification. There's good and there's bad to gentrification. When indie theater comes to an area, restaurants do well, bars do well, and in the, the increased foot traffic can help make safer public streets. But we also create tensions and push people out of the area. The cycle of gentrification is complete when the creative class is priced out of the area. So here's a two-part question. What can indie theater people do to be good citizens when they move into an area? And what can you do to help us stay and be vibrant parts of the diversity in your districts? You have two minutes to respond. Um, first of all, thank you so much to the League of Independent Theater. It's uh, such an honor to be here. My name is Marty Speranza. I'm a candidate uh, for City Council District 4. For those of you not familiar with the district, it starts at 14th, goes to the Upper East Side. It does include a lot of Midtown, uh, so an area that's certainly dense with independent theaters. And, uh, and as you know, a lot of luxury towers going in, and as that happens, it displaces not only residents, but small businesses. Uh, small business is a passion of mine. Uh, I'm a former small business owner myself. Uh, prior to launching this campaign, I ran a program for the city called Women Entrepreneurs New York City. We work specifically with women from underserved communities to help them starting and growing their small businesses. I certainly understand the importance of preserving the fabric of our neighborhoods in terms of allowing these uh, small business owners to thrive. What we can do is support them, shop at them. I'll give you an example. In, in Stytown, there's a very popular bagel shop called Essa Bagel. Uh, you know, when I have been up and down the district talking to residents and small business owners, 
And um, Michael Wenzelberg said to me, you know, I, I don't think there's going to be any small businesses left in New York City in uh, 20 years. And that's uh, a scary thought for all of us in the room. But the reality is that uh, the city needs to support our small business uh, across the city. That's right. Uh, and so what we can do is we can think outside of the box. Programs like WE NYC that connected entrepreneurs with funding. Um, and these are micro businesses. People in the room that might be um, part of independent theater might not think of yourself as an entrepreneur. You're absolutely small business owners. And so there's uh, a lot that you can do in terms of keeping your businesses uh, thriving. And as consumers, uh, we of course need to. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Jeff Mailman, and I'm running for City Council District 4 as well. Uh, the first part of your question is, what can you do to be good neighbors? I think you are good neighbors already. I think this community treasures the local businesses, and uh, that's why you're looking uh, so hard to find space so that you can stay. Close it off. Put it, put it out your mouth. Oh, oh there I'm you sorry. Go. Okay. <laughs> okay. But I hope you heard that first yeah. part. Uh, and in terms of complaints, the noise complaints, that's the number one constituent issue. I don't hear it emanating from lit, or so, so we're fine. <laughs> uh, in terms of what the city council can do to support independent theater and arts, well, I think that we should look into, like SBS has a tons of programs to help manufacturers. Uh, there are special zones, financing, there are people to help manu small manufacturers find staff to hire and to expand. And I would want to explore to see if SBS is providing those type of services to these cultural groups and to theaters. I think that's a, a big step that we can take. And in terms of finding space, as you said, that's your number one priority. So that would be my number one priority. Uh, I think I would look to partner with cultural institutions in the district and throughout the city. And perhaps in exchange for investing in capital improvements that the schools desperately need, we can maybe work out a shared space arrangement. Uh, this is just some one option that I would look to explore. Uh, so my name is Keith Powers. I'm also a candidate for the Fourth Council District. Thank you guys for having me. I was a last minute addition, so I get the written name tag, but I <laughs> appreciate you guys giving the same audience. So I grew up just about 10 blocks from here in Stuyvesant, Peter Cooper. But I remember the East Village when it was cool, I guess, and when it was hip. <laughs> And before it got expensive for a lot of people to live here, and the people who really were the fabric of the East Village and made it sort of the place where it was a destination for people to come for the arts and culture. So I watched sort of the transition myself. And uh, in terms of the question about good neighbors, I agree with I agree with Jeff, which is you guys are good neighbors, no question about it. On um, the question of gentrification, tackling gentrification, it's a, it's prices and affordability. So we have to tackle on the on the real estate side and the business side the, the question of how to preserve businesses and, and independent theater spaces, art spaces. Uh, on the, ha the, the, the side of housing, we also have to make it affordable for people to live here. The East Village should be a place where people can continue to live here and grow and raise families and so forth. So I'll take both of those. On the, on the cultural space uh, question, I think it's partially a land use and, and zoning question. I think we can incentivize more cultural space when we're using the land use process. I think we can uh, create special, we have we have benefits and density benefits already that exist if you build a school, a community facility, if you do all sorts of other things, I think we can really strengthen uh, the density bonuses around creating arts and cultural space, put it at an affordable rate, and we can also give things like tax breaks to, to developers for also building the kind of space they're looking for, if I get 30 seconds. So, um, so I think that's a, I think that's a big part of it. Uh, we also have to drive down prices around the way places where people live. And one preserve good affordable housing, like the rent regulated apartment I grew up in. We have to keep it rent regulated. We have to create actual new affordable housing that's actually affordable. We can't make affordable housing call it that, and then people can't afford it once they are ready to sort of have a family and grow. So real affordable housing, and then on small businesses, I think these take. I'll leave it at that. I have a small business plan. I'll talk to you guys about it. <laughs> Hello, my name is Edward Santos. I'm here uh, running for District 8, which is Charlem in the South Bronx. Um, in terms of the first part of the question, what can we do? I think uh, just being out in the community has always been um, a great idea. 
when I was a teacher uh, in East Harlem, we had artists come in and show students how to uh, do certain aspects of their art. I remember when I was a teacher, improv artists came to me and taught me how to present better. And, and um, I started up taking a bunch of improv classes through UCB and, and um, Magnet Theater. So um, for me, I think just being out in the community and actively going out to different places, whether that be schools or small businesses. I know so many small businesses out there who want to have really unique art on their walls and they don't have anything. So it's really, I think, uh, it's gonna be a combination of the artists just being out there um, putting out their work, and then also just knowing where to connect people. In terms of the second question, uh, you know, things that I want to do is just make sure that we have affordable housing in the community. So when I think about that, I think about PS109, which is across the street from where I live. Uh, and I don't know if all of you know about PS109, but it was, used to be a school, and it converted to affordable housing units specifically for artists and those uh, individuals who uh, work in the arts. Uh, and I remember the process of applying, you had to have uh, a video uh, if you were, you know, I was a clarinetist and like a clarinetist can go and, and do a video. Um, and I think PS109 is a model of what we can do in this city. Um, it's a great space to uh, see theater and see art, and, but also keep, uh, keep things affordable for, for the city. So thank you. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Arden. I'm running for city council in District 10, which is Washington Heights, uh, Inwood, and uh, Marble Hill. Um, I was an actor uh, for about five years. I went to school in New York and um, produced theater that went up in independent theaters um, all across the city. I auditioned at WOW, which is down the street. Um, all, yeah, all over. So I, I, I understand um, what it means to produce theater in New York City. Um, in terms of gentrification, um, I think one of the first things, I'm, I was a gentrifier in my neighborhood uh, 13 years ago. I moved there because I had a friend who was an opera singer and she lived there. Um, and people continue to move out of portions of lower Manhattan, out into the boroughs and up into upper Manhattan because that's where they can afford to live. Um, that's what I do. So I think one of the first things that we can do when we move to a new neighborhood is just acknowledge that we're doing that. Um, and I think as, as white folk, um, especially me in a district that's heavily Dominican, I think that's something that I have to acknowledge on a daily basis. Um, I don't think that it's, you know, I, I think I agree with everybody on the panel who has already said that we, we are good neighbors. Um, but I, I think that we just need to be, um, I know that I have had to be a little bit more aware of my presence in the community that I might have had to be, had to have been in a different district. Um, in terms of what I would like to do um, in office, I, I definitely want to focus on, um, on affordable housing. There is tons of affordable housing going up in the district. Um, and I think that having a, um, you know, a mandatory inclusionary policy for having a per portion of that uh, housing going to artists in the neighborhood is essential. Um, Inwood and yeah, Inwood and Washington Heights tend to be places where artists go because it is still it was one of the affordable places left in the city. It was easy to commute to from the theater district. Um, lots of you know artists have come out of there, so I think it is essential that we focus on affordable housing. Hello, again, my name is John Joyner Joseph Jr. And I'm running to represent the 36th district of Bedford Stuyvesant in Northern Crown Heights. Um, as a young man, I understand the need for expressionalism and arts and performing arts, and the uh, need for the affordability in the housing and uh, the benefit that um, the benefit that. Uh, performing arts and art has um, I developed what is called the Equal Living Cost Rights Law. Um, well, it's a petition, and if I was elected, I would want to see it um, enacted into law, which calls for 50% of units and that developers bring to city council. 50% of the units within residential buildings would have to be um, um, put aside for 
low income and low in uh, low income affordable for affordable um, for youth and uh, adults. Um, gentrification is is not a black and white issue. It's a it's a money issue. Um, and so we have to focus on how we can bring finances to residents and invest in residents. Um, one way of ensuring that we, uh, that artists can bring, uh, bring their talent into their district is to work with community boards and also ensuring that uh, space is utilized by working with community board um, developers and come to community board to get approval. And so this is this is where the opportunity lies to um, fight for affordable housing. Thank you. Thank you very much, candidates. We're gonna move right along, along to our light, right, lightning round questions. So raise your hands if you are willing to be a co-sponsor to Ben Cables' City Spaces Initiative to create searchable database for of unused or underutilized City owned spaces. Thank you very much. <laughs> Raise your hands if you will clearly and visibly list your stances on issues facing indie theater and performing art on your web campaign's website and literature. <laughs> Raise your hands if you support expanding the theater subdistrict fund to include arts organizations with budgets below $250,000 a year. <laughs> Uh, you support the promotion of indie theater to the more than 61 million visitors coming to New York City every year. <laughs> you can commit to working with the League to create new non-traditional spaces suitable for indie theater performances in your district. <laughs> uh, you support campaign finance reform and getting money from uh, getting money from PACs, super PACs, or special interests out of political campaigns at all levels. You support New Yorkers for Culture and Arts request to increase the funding by $40 million in the city's budget. Our second topic for this panel. Yes. I was the only one who didn't raise my hand about the union and PAC questions. I just want to say just briefly, I participate in the city's matching funds program. So what it does is it places caps. It doesn't say you can't take from unions or PACs, but it places caps. And it's a world-renowned program, uh, the best in the country. And so that's why I didn't raise my hand to that question. All right, thank you, Jeff. All right, so the second topic for this panel relates to planks five and 10, which cover housing and the creation of cultural districts. Uh, as had been mentioned in 2014, the El Barrios Art Space PS109 was created which gave us 89 units of affordable living, working housing for artists and their families. But last week, Governor Cuomo announced a proposed $1.4 billion Vital Brooklyn project in central Brooklyn to get more affordable housing, parks, and athletic fields, but no mention of anything arts related in that proposal. So, player's choice question. Where in your district might you create a new cultural district and why? Or where and how might you create more live workspace for indie theater artists in your district? You have two minutes to respond. Thank you so much. So uh, certainly affordable housing is New York City's greatest challenge. And I think when we're looking at uh, that challenge, it's also important to recognize the tremendous impact, uh, economic impact, that the arts have on the city. So you mentioned the 60 million tourists coming in, many of them to see off-off-Broadway shows, independent theater, and the impact of, of those people coming to our city is, uh, is really tremendous. What you have is, um, you know, a, a sad state when you, uh, the independent theater is employing you know, tens of thousands of people, and yet uh, it's one quarter of 1% of the city's budget that goes towards the arts. So clearly there's an issue in terms of prioritization. 
Um, there needs to be more resources available for those in the arts so they can continue to be successful and thereby make uh, the city successful in its arts programming. Uh, of course, affordable housing, it would be great to see, uh, you know, uh, complexes like Manhattan Plaza on the west side, on the east side. Um, so I would advocate for, um, you know, in the midtown east area, there are lands. Um, we should definitely be looking at both underutilized and um, undeveloped city-owned properties to create those sorts of um, not only housing, but performance and rehearsal spaces that are so desperately needed to maintain this culture. New York City prides itself on being the cultural center, not only of the country, but of the world. So it's absolutely essential that serious dollars go behind these efforts. This isn't, um, this isn't optional. This is something that's uh, very much part of our city's identity and economic health. In District 4, I think that the best opportunity to create cultural space, and, and I think when any big development is proposed, that cultural space should be one of the elements uh, that's evaluated in addition to schools. So if you're going to cite X number of residents, 500 or so, you look at the impact on schools. I think cultural space in our district as well, senior space, and I think it was Mary who mentioned it's a perfect partnership. It could be senior space and cultural space. And I think it's through those developments and as they arise in this district, and if they happen, if they go through the Euler process or so, I think that negotiating with the developers and taking input from the community board to see exactly what's needed and to see what can be worked out. Uh, just like public spaces are often negotiated uh, with one Vanderbilt, the tower to be built right across the street from Grand Central. Dan Gorodnik set a great precedent and before that building can be occupied, the developer's making $220 million of improvements to Grand Central Station. And so I think that that model, that framework, uh, is one to be followed going forward. And I think that it's through those types of developments that we'll see, we'll get tangible results and see more space created. And I do know that if the council member is on board and truly values cultural space, then, uh, and a project, you know, and you want to see a project go through, that if it's as important to the council member, it's likely to happen. And so I think that that's the best approach. And uh, just like with these developments like firehouses, more city services other than schools need to be incorporated into that process. Thank you. I'm gonna go even further. I'm gonna say that, you know, I think we have to actually provide real incentives. I think that even not just encouraging them to do it, but actually putting things into the zoning code and into our tax, pro our tax laws that act property tax laws, which the city does control, to actually incentivize it. I think we have to go further than just sort of asking them to do it. I think we actually have to go out as a city council member and do it. So uh, I think that when we are doing the land use and zoning process, I think we can really, we always do these density bonuses. We always do, we bring these rezonings to us and, and developers ask us for things and we ask for things back. And I think actually having in the zoning code and also as, as council members and council candidates thinking seriously about how to use our land use process to incentivize uh, cultural space. We, are, we like all the stuff that we put in, uh, but also making cultural space at the front of, prior, of a priority in terms of what we ask for when they build space. I think that's one. And then also really looking at our property tax code about whether there are other incentives we can give to build uh, to build affordable housing, but also to build space in the bottom of it that can be cultural and art space. So I think we can even do more than encourage, I think we can require, or at least incentivize. Um, the entire issue of affordable housing, I can talk for an hour about, but I do wanna say, um, as we're creating this little workspace, we have to make sure that we're creating good affordable housing in New York City. Uh, I would go back to what I said earlier, which is that driving the prices down of our, and creating real affordable housing has to be a priority for the city, the mayor and city council for the next four, eight, 10, 12, and 20 years. We have to create both short-term and long-term affordable housing. We have to look at strengthening tenant organizations, strengthening the existing housing stock we have, and we have to actually get real about building affordable housing that's affordable for people, not the thing we pretend is affordable. First, I want to say I'm, I'm disappointed in Andrew Cuomo's uh, inability to put in um, art 
uh, in that budget in Brooklyn. It's very sad to think that that's not a part of um, every single uh, aspect of renovation that happens. Um, the first part of the question is, where can we create some cultural districts and corridors? In my district in East Harlem and the South Bronx, uh, we have a bunch of these different business corridors on the 16th and 125th Street that I think are so interesting. When I was a, um, an improv actor, um, I used to go, I used to go under Triple Crown and be able to do this free stuff and, and take my friends and do shows there. Um, and I find that ability for a public slash private partnership to be really interesting. So I think when we think about trying to create those cultural corridors, we look to businesses and those small businesses to be able to say, hey, look, you know, we can put some art in there, we can put artists and uh, create theater in the different shops that are not being used um, and be able to kind of create that corridor in place. Um, the next part is where can we create the live workspace uh, that's affordable. Um, when I think about East Harlem right now, it is under this massive redistricting. And so we have this great opportunity to really work with um, our city government to say, hey, look, art spaces need to happen in our community. And so right now we're actually in this fight. And so what I'm doing is I'm fighting to make sure that we have affordable spaces, not only for artists, but for those uh, you know, who can't afford to live in my district. Um, and so I think those, taking a look at those unique opportunities and, and advocating for mandatory affordable housing priorities is going to be the key to be able to, uh, to get those spaces in place. Um, I want to echo, echo what, uh, what Edward said about, um, about concern regarding the, uh, the, mayor, the governor's inability to, po to put um, arts funding in the Brooklyn project. Um, that's where it starts. Artists need money, independent theaters need money. If it isn't budgeted from the beginning, it's really hard to get down the road. Um, it needs to be in there. When we're talking about affordable housing up in District 10, um, District 10, Washington Heights, Inwood is one of the most, has one of the most concentrated, if not the most concentrated, um, amount of rent control and rent stabilized apartments in the city. They need to be protected. And whether that means going, um, you know, making a big loud stink to Albany and saying, we need to, you need to protect our affordable housing here in the city. Um, whether that means making sure that uh, developers, when if they come, um, put in affordable housing units in their in their buildings, that's important. Um, I think one of the touching on um, point ten of the of the platform. I think one of the most uh, an important thing we can do um, to help um, make New Yorkers aware of the independent theater community is by naming things and putting plaques on things and naming streets because it's things that people see. People can appreciate something that they don't know exists, that they don't know, that they can't see on a daily basis. And if they see a name on a street, absolutely, they could look it up and see what, what's this, what is this person's story? What did they contribute to my community? Um, I, I would totally support that. In terms of cultural um, uh, design, you know, uh, districts, um, we, one of the other things that District 10 has a lot of is parks. So there's no reason that Shakespeare in the Park, that kind of thing, can only happen in Central Park. They need to be fixtures and foundations in our communities. We need to use park spaces and build community centers for our artists to be able to work. Okay, so um, where? Um, in Bedford Stuyvesant, um, there is the Restoration Plaza, um, and which is lot big space, tons of space in which I want to see plenty of uh, artists, entrepreneurs, young people um, promoting the, uh, free um, uh, space for uh, for anything that you know, one may, one might want to do. Um, how? Um, well, it's about organizing and bringing together each other in the things that matter, the things that matter to us. And so uh, it's networking in some way. So we have to bring each other together, networking in 
uh, a place like the Restoration Plaza in which we all bring our, our ideas together and we work together and we make plans and we uh, structure um, that way by networking. Um, live and work space um, uh, for artists is very important because um, do, um, pr doing your work, you know, your creative art forms in uh, your living space is you know, not only um, time efficient, but um, so basically um, the Restoration Plaza, um, bringing our young people to the Restoration Plaza networking and developing each other. Um, thank you. And one quick wrap up starting on the end over there. This is the closing, yes. Okay. Yes. So um, I guess today really underscores the power of the cultural and artistic community. I know there are 50,000 members of LIT and you're putting on collectively, I think like 2,000 productions a year, which is immense, but you made time to come out tonight to advocate. I was so pleased to see Controller Stringer here earlier. I know that he was instrumental in, in sort of saying we need to organize and it was on all of the members here who created not only a roadmap but came up with really creative solutions and I think that is so important. It's one thing to say you care about an issue but to really get the power behind it and have your messaging so that you can um, make things happen is what it's all about. Um, it was an honor to be part of this conversation. The arts are uh, immensely important to me. I commit to you that if I have the opportunity to serve in council, I will absolutely be your advocate, be your voice. I think New York City is nothing. It's sterile, it's barren without the arts. So thank you for all you do. I wanna thank you all for having me here tonight. Uh, just some personal background. I grew up going to public schools and was fortunate enough to always have access to auditoriums and participate in plays in the school band and really perform in some great venues. And so, uh, and I grew up going to theater and so uh, I certainly, I so appreciate it and it adds so much uh, to life and some of my fondest memories are, are watching shows with my family. And so as a council member, I would certainly want to look to preserve space. The fact that we're in this theater is such a cool place. I don't, you know, I don't want to see this theater or any other like this closed. And also funding, uh, what Controller Stringer mentioned earlier, that bill that he, the report that he issued about arts education and then all the funding that ensued. I, draft, I helped to draft the bill with council member Crowley to do the same thing for physical education and public skills. We had a transparency bill, and then tens of millions flowed in to bring schools up to speed in terms of gym. And so arts, gym, these are all elements for a sound education. Thank you. Thank you, again, I, I agree. Thank you guys for being here. I know that uh, you could be anywhere but tonight, but to be here and participate is a, a really big deal and, and appreciated by all of us. And I have to say congratulations to all the candidates because it's a lot to get up here and to, to run. So congrats to everybody who, who's taken the risk. So thanks again, my name is Keith Powers. Uh, I look forward to talking to you guys after this, but I, I would obviously seek your support here and ask if you're, if you're looking for a campaign to volunteer for it. So somebody, you live in the fourth, to please say, take a look at Keith Powers at NYC. Uh, I'm very committed to the arts. I, in my prior job, uh, we helped establish the Department of Education's Arts Education Committee. I've, we had worked on legislation around the Council of Arts. Uh, I, uh, uh, and actually should say, I am being supported by Council Member Ben Kalos, who has your legislation on the city spaces. I'm very proud of that. I think Ben knows we can work together around issues around uh, creating cultural art space and, and supporting small businesses and entrepreneurs. So very proud of that. I will leave it at that. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you guys out there on the campaign trail. Thanks for being here tonight. Uh, hello again, my name is Edward Santos. Um, I just want to thank Lit for just taking the time to organize this. Um, I grew up in a working class immigrant family. Um, and when I'm city councilman, I want to focus on good schools for kids, good jobs for people, and affordable housing for everyone. Uh, believe it or not, English was my second language, and my mom 
basically put me into musical theater, so I could speak English, and it was this amazing experience for me. Uh, so I know how arts can make New York City better. In fact, I think artists are the lifeblood of New York City, and I look forward to uh, your support on September 12th. Thank you. Hi again, my name is Arden. I'm running in District 10. Um, I mentioned before that I was an actor. I still currently work in, in arts administration and theater administration. It is, um, when I moved to New York City 13 years ago, the theater was my community. Um, and the good thing about having the theater be your community is that they are everywhere. <laughs> theater people love to communicate, they love to get together, they love to be active, and that is a valuable resource. You should continue to do that. Um, you know, even when you think uh, you know, that maybe your voice doesn't matter as much, you have to know that it does, and you have to reach out to your representatives. Um, as a city council rep, I will, I promise to pursue uh, items on your, um, on your platform, housing, uh, affordable rehearsal space, um, supporting the, the city spaces bill, um, and, and growing public-private partnerships. I went to two, um, two uh, education-related um, events in my district recently, and they were both held in wonderful auditoriums that were nicer than most of the theaters I performed in when I was an actor. Um, so I, we really need to use the spaces that are there, um, and I hope that you'll support me. Hello, thank you again for having me here. Thank you, LIT guys, artists, directors, and producers, actors, young people. You know, keep up the good work. You know, we have to stick together so we can ensure that our work transitions into the next generation. Um, and I grew up watching movies like Chorus Line, uh, <laughs> Watching Our Picture Show, and, um, so, and I understand how uh, theater, performing arts, and art is a, is a social development for young people and for adults. And our young people need to be um, need to be uh, with our artists and our performing artists so that social development can transition into our youth. Um, uh, thank you all. Um, as I'm going to say, I'm running for uh, 36 district city council representing Bedford Stuyvesant and North Carolina. Thank you. Thank you to all the fans. Super round of applause for our second panel. We are going to take another quick five minute break, five minutes, and then we're going to set back up for our final panel of the evening.